What's going on, everyone? It's Bales, and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Head to Head video where we put two players up against one another to see who we're we'll picking between those two players. This is episode 11 of the series. If you haven't checked out the other 10 episodes, either as a YouTube video or as a podcast, make sure you go and check those wherever you get those. But join me is another special guest, um, another third of the traders. So I've got two thirds of the traders locked in. I'm just going to get Roy on for one of them as well. It is the Pirate, Calvin, mate. How you doing? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Preseason's uh, ramping up, mate. Obviously, it's been busy for, for you boys as well as we sort of get closer towards the start of the season. Yeah, this is this is by far probably our busiest time of the year over that Christmas, New Year, early January sort of period. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty busy at the moment, but but hopefully pumping out some good stuff. Yeah, no, that's exactly the way. And we're talking about two players. We, we focused a, a lot of the episodes about the, the sort of premiums in their lines, but today we're going to be going to a couple of value options that could present a, a good option for you from anywhere really to M5 to, to M6, to pe- or M- maybe even M7 if you're going really deep in the midfield. We're talking about, and I'm more speaking about the second guy than M7, so don't get too crazy saying Matt Crouch can be M7 people. I'm not that um, that crazy. But Matt Crouch and Josh Simpkin are the two we're going to be looking at today, both undervalued um, on what we've, we've seen them doing. So um, Matt Crouch there priced at 734K, and Josh Simpson being a little bit cheaper than him there at 684K. So, Calvin, we'll be taking Matt Crouch, and I'll be taking Josh Simpson. So, Cal, why don't you start us off? Why should people be selecting Matt Crouch in their size for 2024? Okay, all right. I've sold Matt Crouch already over the course of the preseason. At the moment, he's in about 11% of teams. So, one in one in 10. A um, few people are starting to listen and catch on board. And the obvious answer where people don't like Matt Crouch they go, oh, look, he won't be in the midfield. He won't be in the mix, okay? So to go against that argument from that angle is he was in the mix. They brought him out of the sample back into the team for those last six games last year. Now, let's go back because Adelaide were trying to make finals, okay? So, and they've gone, well, how are we going to do it? We need Crouchy. So they've got Crouchy in for those last six games. Now, he obviously... He popped his head in for one game earlier in the year, and in that one, I think he had like a forty. Uh, but he was a sub in that one. Uh, yeah, that was sub, in yeah. round, yeah, in round eight, he had a forty. So, and then he sort of disappeared. He comes back in round 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, to help the Crows make finals. We know how it ended, right? They should have the bloody ripped off right at the end there. But he played out the last six games. He played out the last six games at an average of ninety eight. Now, we all know what Crouchy's done in the past with those 100-plus averages. And I'm not going to say he's going to be in those areas again, but he's priced at nine, uh, what's he priced at here? 81.3. Mm. Now, that is potential. Minimum, minimum 15 unders, could even be 20 unders. He's just signed a two-year contract extension, meaning he is in their plans this year. He's in their plans next year, or maybe as a backup, a bit more of insurance. But those last six games to me are critical because he'd fallen off the face of the earth. They didn't want him. He was plodding away in the sample. And then all of a sudden, he's come back with 82, 105, tons up for the next four times in a row, 74 in that last week. So if he is in their plans, if he is used in the middle for these practice games, then he must be seriously considered. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah, um, like there's a few people been talking about. I, like, I had we had this discussion actually uh, on the episode of Brochure and Laird that I had uh, with James, obviously Shucker's uh, runner-up from 2022. So if you guys haven't checked that video out, make sure you're doing all the other episodes. But we said that we just can't see how there's going to be a big bump for your Rochelle's and guys like that. I think that if you look at it, Dawson's captain. He's not moving out there. He's, no. he's going to be in the midfielder. He can push forward and push behind the ball, but that's going to be in-game, um, not in terms of CBAs. Lady is a midfielder. He, of course, he can play at half-back, but that may be something that we see in a few years' time when he gets sort of really at the back end of his career. But this moment is a midfielder, and Crouch, he can't play anywhere else. So I just I do think that Crouch is locked in that, um, into that that starting tree midfield, and, and they wouldn't give him a two-year contract for no reason. And as you say, he's playing in the games where – Crows are pushing for finals. Like, Laird got injured in round 18 against Giants. Round 19 came against Melbourne. So, like, it's Clayton Oliver, Chris Petrarca, Jack Viney, like, guys like that. And they go, Matt Crouch going to throw you in there. Played quite well and then kept his spot as they were pushing for finals. So, I, I just don't 
see how he's not in the team come round one. Is it, do you agree with that? Do you think that he's going to be in that midfield three mix and you just don't see how he's not? 100%. And I think um, in those last six games, he would have been 70 75% of the CBAs. And a lot of people, a lot of Crows fans, um, like myself, of course, you know, passionate Crow, and uh, yeah. they go, well, look, Rochelle's the future. Rochelle needs to be in there. Two, two questions to that is, why wasn't he there in the last six games? Okay, because they're rating Matt Crouch ahead of him. The way I see this playing out is I think the Crows will start with Matt in there. Now, if it goes to shit and the Crows aren't looking like they're doing any good or they need a change, then he goes. If the Crows aren't making finals, he goes. Like, And then they start trialling yeah. your Rochelle's and all that. I just don't think that they go away from the big three in the guts from the start, try to get some wins on the board. Crows need to make finals this year. And if they're trying to make finals last year with Matt Crouch, then they're going to do it again. Yeah. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, I do agree. I think he'll be in that same midfield. The one question I'll throw back to you with, with Crouch is that people are going to say Dawson's here. He's a 110-plus guy. Laddie, yeah. he's midfielder, he's a 110-plus guy. And these were the years when Matt, before when Matt Crouch was averaging over 100 when Laddie was a defender and Dawson wasn't there. So how do you see that? playing out do you see crouchy as a guy that can go 100 plus do you see him more as a 95 guy and and still still good value priced at 81 yeah. still at least 15 unders so where do you see crouchy sort of average um coming out um to start the year realistically i think he's in that 95 to 100 bracket okay and if 15 points is enough for you then then he's your man but um an, another part of this matt crouch conversation is the and it's limited data, I get that, but it's the small effect that he had on a Jordan Dawson and his output in those last five, six games as well. So for that reason alone, I don't think anyone would in their right mind start with Jordan Dawson, uh, just not based on the fact that he's priced so highly as he is. But Matt Crouch being there did, for those games anyway, did sort of dampen his numbers a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a little flag. And um, we did talk about that with Dawson as well in another episode uh, with Jake from Hatch Up. We've saying that could that have been just Matt Crouch effect and, and Dawson numbers came down, or was it maybe he played a full year as a mid first full exactly. year and captain? And we still it's a lot of unknowns a little bit with Dawson. I think we all know he's probably going to go 105 plus, but being so highly priced when then Matt Crouch is presenting a lot of value. So it's going to be Really interesting. A good preseason watch as well for Matt Crouch's role um, when the Crows um, have uh, those couple of like your, your Matt Sims in the preseason games. Look, but yeah, that, that's the thing. He doesn't have any other role. You're either in the team as a yeah. mid, or you're out of the team in the sample. He doesn't have any other options. Yeah, fully agree. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think he'll be starting uh, in the side for 2024. We're going to the other side of Lacoyne and a little bit of a different um, scenario with Josh Simpkin. He's been in the team and he sort of hasn't played as much midfield as, as what he did in, in those years where we saw him put up these good averages. So last year had a, had a bit of a down year, uh, well, a fair bit of a down year actually, and he's been a bit of a, it's a downward trend last couple of years, um, uh, only averaging 75.8 last year. Missed, missed some games, just, just some freak sort of injuries, like missed round three, missed round six. Um, and round five, he was subbed out, I think it was with a hand injury against the Lions. He was subbed out against Essendon in round 12 with a concussion. Missed round 13. Then he had a buy in round 15. Missed round 18 and 19. Another injury against Geelong only scored a 23. They can't quite remember what that injury was. But just these stop starts for his, for his season. Elder, you had the same thing. Well, just no real continuity with his body. But um, it's just we, we know, and we know he's capable of better. He's one of the leaders of the group. He's one of the captains of North Melbourne. And and we, we, we have seen these years of him go really well, like just going back to his 2021 year, average 95.5 from his games. Um, I believe I'm just having getting his pulling up his 20, uh, 2022 numbers here as well in terms of his average. Um, and it's not quite loading for me on the screen. So yeah, I'll yeah 95.5. He's yep, basically come back to back seasons leading into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then average 70 in the COVID year. So, obviously, that's about a 90-odd average um, when you round that up. You average 71 in that year. Um, and then looking at 2022, and it's still not loading. So, I don't know, Cal, if you've got the numbers up there for me for Josh Simmons' 2022 average. Um, yeah, 95.5 again. It was actually exactly the yeah. same for those two years. Yeah. There you go. So, we, we know he's capable of, of 95, and he's gone on stretches averaging well over 100. So, my question to you, Cal, is, is that – those years, North Melbourne was still not great, but 
they didn't have many people around him. LDU was still learning his tricks to trade and sort of getting up to full-time speed of AFL footy. No Wardlaw, no Phillips, no Powell really in the team. So what do you what do you see Josh Kim doing this year? Do you see him being that second guy behind an LDU and being able to put up these numbers? Or do you see maybe North Melbourne giving your Wardlaws and your, and your Powers and your Phillips and even a Taran Thomas and, and guys like that more opportunity and maybe see him pushed out into a different position? What, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's it's a real uh, it's an re- interesting question, isn't it? Because you look at the CBAs from last year, and LDU's a one trick pony. That's that's all he's going to do. Okay, so he has no other options. As far as CBA goes, Phillips was the next highest with sixty one percent, and then Jai Simpkin. Simpkin's been smashing it. He's been winning time trials. He's looking absolutely amazing compared to what he did this year, where he struggled. He struggled. He's he was vested twice. Uh, and he even he, so he's got a seven in his score there with a vest and a forty-eight as well. So you take those scores out, you can you can see what he's what he's capable of. And even there, that one twenty-three in round twenty-four against the Suns um, is just what this guy can do. Look, I'm a massive yep. fan, and the, another big difference here between him and Crouch, it's about forty fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So with that extra yep. coin, you could be going in this direction, I guess. That's the that's the biggest question. Like, I've heard uh, across the preseason that he might be coming off back half back, but then again, I've heard everyone from North Melbourne apparently is coming off half back at yeah. they like, you yeah. name them, and they're going to come off there. So, yeah. so who's in the gut? So it's LDU, it's got to be Simpkin, it's got to be your Wardlaw. Wardlaw. I think yeah. would be your main three with Phillips chopping in. I reckon Colby will chop in at times. Um, Maybe Taron Thomas, she's all but obviously Taron Thomas will miss the start. I think it looks like he might miss the start. He's delayed preseason, but and then Sheasel has been rumored to be moving into maybe some midfield time. And that's it. And once he comes in, that's another conversation. But I, I think that affects his scoring. I don't think he's getting that the cheap ball down back like he had uh, last year. I think that should be more open for uh, your Zach Fishers and your Colbys. That's that they look like yeah. taking over that role and. We saw West Coast come out the other day and talk about Harley Reid and what they plan on doing. Like as Adam Simpson said, this is, this is the blueprint now of what they're going to do to protect yeah. these top uh, top kids. And when Cole, we, we interviewed him over in Lonnie before he went away. Like North Melbourne basically had a, had a conversation with him. You know, would you be willing to? And he was like, oh, "Well, I've never done it. I'll I'll have a go at it for sure." Like, and he was like. He would be. He'd love that role of just sort of floating around and using his left foot, taking kickouts, yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, for a guy like him, it's going to be fantastic. Where Simpkin, where Simpkin fits in all this, I think. I think he's got to be back in the guts. I think he's got to be back in the guts. Yeah, he's, he's got to be that that leader like LDU. They've got to be the two leads in there, giving these guys like your Wardlaws and if if McCurch is in there and then Sheasel and and Phillips and Powell, like they've got to be these older bodies sort of showing them the way and then yep. like just and it could be a selfless role from Simkin which might could impact your screen might just be that selfless guy that says hey um LDU's obviously there but Wardlaw you can have more responsibility and and guys like that. so it's, it's gonna be very interesting but as you say smashing the time trials out looking in really good nick to start the year he has had pre, last couple pre-seasons had a couple of niggles and and we, we've seen in plays in the past with with these interrupted pre-seasons that when they have a good run at it, we saw Paddy Cripps, what was it, two years ago, said he had the best preseason ever. He was looking great and look, he had a great year. If Simkin keeps this up and has a good preseason, it wouldn't shock me if he goes 100 plus and, and and really sort of makes a really good value pick. So it's going to be really interesting. As you say, that round 23 game as well, where he went over 120, just shows that he's still got it. So where if you had to pinpoint Simkin's average, where do you have it? Do you have it similar to Crouchy, that 95 to 100? Do you, are you more bullish at going 100 plus or maybe a little bit less? Where, where have you I'm, been, uh, I'm actually a little bit less, to be honest. The, I think Crouchy has the ability to score higher and score more than Simpkin, based off the fact that Simpkin's best is only that 95.5. Um, yep. So he's going to be that at his best, and which puts I, – I have him in that 90 to 95 range, whereas yep. I think Crouch – could potentially be that five points better over the year. But with that said, as we spoke about Crouchy, like Simpkins role to me is so much, so much more of a certainty than it is for old Matt. 
yep. Oh, there you go. So very, very interesting. Uh, these two are going to be in the preseason. They're going to be uh, value players that are going to be heavily talked about. But Tom's come um, to pick between the two. So, Cal, out of the two, who would you be picking between Matt Crouch and Jai Simpkin? It's a good one. So all preseason, I've had Matt Crouch, okay? And I'm happy to have Matt Crouch there. But as of last night, I needed an extra 50K because I was playing around with my team, right? And that was the switch I made. I went Crouch to Simpkin because I needed that coin. Can't remember what I did with it. I would have wasted it somewhere, no doubt. But <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to be far apart. I honestly don't think they're going to be far apart. If I was to choose who scores the most, it's Crouch. Uh, but yeah. at the moment, I needed that little bit of coin, so I have Simpkin. So to answer your question there, Bales, I'm going to say Matt Crouch is the better pick this year. Yeah, I agree. I think Matt Crouch is, is going to be – the guy there um, again. It's going to be very uh, interesting for preseason. What's the good thing with the, with these two is that they don't have an opening uh, uh, like six week buy. So the good thing is they'll play all the way through. You don't have to worry about any any dramas with that. So I think picking either or, or potentially both. If you, if you're bullish on both, I don't think there's a problem with picking either. Um, so as you said, Simpkin is in your side. You don't have both. It is just Simpkin, and you sort of switch between the two. Is that how you're looking at the moment? Yeah, I've got that. That position's my M5 at the moment. Then I've got my rookies after that. Uh, geez, we all know things change a lot. But as you said, we these guys don't have the buy. They're primed for the picking. I'm just looking at the uh, scale of hardness here, Bales. I had a go at that today. Yeah. Um, so Matt Crouch, he, he only has one hard game in his first seven. Yeah. Uh, Simpkin, this, this is just the same. Like it's they have they've got a great run as well, despite the first one for the Ruse where they've got to travel to to the Giants. So yeah. that's always going to be a tough one. But uh, after that, it opens up for them and they've got a pretty good run. So both great picks, no buy, ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, and I, and I think that the the the, the kind of scale of hardness um, is it, it's very valuable, especially for these mid-price guys because you want them having good fixtures. You want them putting up good scores early because then that's when they can rock it up in price and then you can move them on to a – Potentially, if it's a Bond, Dawson, Golden, Taranto, yeah. if one of these guys drops in price, you can then just jump on. It won't cost you anywhere near as much as what it would be at the start. So, yeah, it's definitely something to take into account. Both have got very good runs. I currently don't have either, but Matt Cratch has, has at times flowed his uh, way through there. Obviously, at the moment, my structure is a little bit heavier in terms of upper um, 800K primos, but Matt Cratch is that guy that if I take a haircut, is probably at the top yeah. of the list there. So, yeah, very, very interesting, and we'll look to, forward to watching them in the preseason. So that'll do it for the head-to-head -head battle for today. So um, if you did enjoy it, make sure you do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel uh, if you haven't already, as we try to reach 2,000 subscribers. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think of Matt Cratch and Josh Simpkin in 2024. If you're selecting either, if you're selecting both, if you're selecting none, let us know. And any other comments as well you want to leave in the chat, feel free. But, Cal, mate, thank you very much for jumping on and also giving us a bit of a, a sneak peek into the uh, scale of hardness there, mate. But uh, uh, yes, where can the people find you on the socials? And uh, what can the people expect uh, from the people's prints uh, in the preseason and then into the season proper? Yeah, as I said, busy time. So I'm at Calvin DT and uh, we started, we're going to look at the uh, a Patreon launch at the end of this month and maybe, yeah. uh, which is pretty exciting. Got a lot of new stuff coming up in that. Uh, and then, of course, just our just our normal stuff that we pump out over the course of the preseason. But, uh, yeah, very excited for the year ahead. And we will talking the other day. This opening round by, I'm actually embracing it. I love it. I love that yeah. it's there. I think that it's really going to turn this game on its head, especially in the first six weeks. Another little element of um, way in which we can make it different. So, hey, embrace it. Embrace it. And hopefully it's not here to stay, though, Bales. But uh, I, think yeah. it, I think it should be good this season. Yeah, good, be good as a one-off, um, one-off year to, to do something a little bit different. Yeah. But, yeah, where, where can the people sign up for, for the Patreon as well if they want to get involved with that? Yeah, so get over to, um, I think it's Patreon's, uh, what is it, patreon.com slash DT Talk. So uh, I don't think I don't think you can subscribe. I don't think you can join it quite yet, but when we launch, uh, we're going to have a playbook there, uh, which is each team scale of hardness, uh, all the CBAs, all that sort of stuff, um, plus – couple of players to pick from each team and, and then basically stat pages like this really, which sort of shows um, that's been North Melbourne at the moment, just shows the last few years and yep. all that sort of stuff. So it's go. pretty, um, pretty exciting sort of thing. And 
so, something that you can print off, like our little book here that Warnie makes us each year. So, and it's just love great it. to flip through them and have a look and see what people have done over, and, and even great for draft to have a look at the last couple of averages compared to this year. So, little things like that um, coming short soon. So, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, make sure you get around Patreon and, and around the boys making great content and uh, working hard for us fancy coaches uh, every year. So. That'll do it on Bat Battles DT. Uh, social media links are in the description below, so make sure you go and follow me across all of those. And in the next episode, we've got another member of Pod Pod jumping on for an episode. We're talking a couple of value defenders um, that'll be a uh, very, very interesting dis- um, discussion um, with this special guest to see uh, who we're picking out the two. But until that episode, me and Calvin, we're both out. We'll catch you guys in the next one. So we're out. Cheers. Cheers.